Cam from Blacktail Studios was one of my original Twin Turbo Vice Kickstarter customers, a fact that I had missed until he informed me of this in an unrelated conversation. He told me that his shop situation had changed and he only had a spot for the vise on this aluminum extrusion table but wasn't exactly sure how to mount it. So I said I'd give it a go because it's pretty similar to the vices I put on my CNC machine. This also gave me an opportunity to try a few different things on this vise build that I've seen my customers do but I've never tried myself. First off, I'm making the jaw out of a single slab instead of a glue up. A slab build seemed on brand for Blacktail Studio. Doing the build this way definitely takes more time. I could have loaded this into the CNC and hogged out the material that way, but the first time I try anything on a CNC isn't quite right and I need to fine tune it, so at my current level of CNC competency it really only makes sense if I'm going to be producing a whole lot of something and a few initial errors are worth it for the productivity gains and having the CNC. That's definitely not the case here. I do not want to screw up this slab. Until now every vise that I've done is just a rectangular block, but I thought I'd try some angles and chamfers on this one, and I really like how it turned out. Also I thought this would be a perfect opportunity to try painting the metal back plate black. I've seen several of my customers do this, and I like the look, but curious what you think. I do make and sell wooden jaws for the twin turbo vise, not out of a single slab, uh, but I have recently increased the level of customization that I'm offering, so if you want to check that out, take a look at the link in the description. Alright Cam, it's all done and tuned up, working good. So all you need to do is get this mount on that front piece of aluminum and then you'll be good to go. So you want to take it off, just unscrew it all the way. Uh, take it off the vise, drill holes through 
this back jaw to recess screws that go into the two tracks on your 90 millimeter high uh, aluminum extrusion. So you get that secured and then do the same on the bottom up through this board, this board right here. That should be enough. If you want to get real crazy, you could drill in through the side and, and also uh, secure this board to the back of the aluminum, but that's, I would judge that overkill. I would probably just do this board and this one on the bottom. And you'll be good. So you may have noticed and been curious why I put bench dogs in a vise that's going on a bench that's three quarter inch material on top of aluminum. How are you gonna put bench dogs in the table? Not much good, just have them in the vise. Okay, so here is what I am sending you, Cam. This is the bench dog. You guys have seen this. This is my bench dog with the inclined dog top on the top. This is what I'm envisioning you screwing onto the bottom of your workbench. This sticks up almost three quarters of an inch. Eight of those pocket hole screws should hold this on very strong. Dog top also sticks up three quarters of an inch. So as you probably can visualize, just drill a hole in a top where you want the dog, screw this whole assembly on the bottom, and you will have a dog in your bench. I think that would be a good strategy for anyone else who has a workbench that's just three quarter inch material on the top pulp workbench kind of thing and you want some bench dogs not a bad way to go hey one last thing this is the bandsaw cut from the beginning of the video you may have noticed that i added two bearing stacks to the top of the taylor toolworks bandsaw fence this effectively makes it a much taller fence for large resaw operations like this without adding extra friction but it also preserves my ability to drop the blade guard down to the fence so that it's still usable for the majority of smaller cuts that aren't nearly as tall. I'm curious if you think this is something that Taylor Tool Works should offer as an accessory to their fence. Uh, let me know in the comments. You might also have noticed that I added two extra magnets to this fence to make sure that I have enough holding strength for really serious cuts like this. Taylor sells these as standalone right now. I put a link in the description for those standalone magnets along with the whole fence in the description. Eventually, MagSwitch will also sell these magnets standalone. Taylor just snapped up all the ones that we had uh, along with the screws to mount them to whatever you want to mount them to. The most interesting thing about these magnets is the post machined surface that is precisely 90 degrees to the table that the magnets are mounted on. That's why the fence is perfectly perpendicular. Besides using them to beef up a fence's attachment to the table or even using them on an entirely shop made fence, what can you think of that these would be good for? I've got some ideas, but curious what you come up with. So let me know and thanks for watching.